Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got the NBA's broken. It's LeBron's fault. Legend of winning low. He says blame it on LeBron. I usually blame it on Curry. On your screen is a graph conveying how many 40 point games occurred in the NBA on a year to year basis since 1955, which is when the shot clock was implemented. This massive spike here is the iconic 1962 season where Wilt Chamberlain averaged 50 points a game and single handedly recorded 63 40 point games by himself. But then you can see this spike right here is the 2006 season where Kobe famously averaged 35 points a game and torched the league night in and night out with 40 point performances. And, and they won that, again. as you can clearly see over the past seven years of basketball, there has been a noticeable increase in the frequency of 40 point games that has occurred on a year to year basis. Actually, a better way for me to really convey to you how common it is for us to see 40 point games in the NBA over the past few years is for me to show you the top 10 years in which the most 40 point games have occurred. And as you can see, six out of the top 10 years have happened within the past six seasons. And literally right outside of the top 10 is this year with 91 40 point games. Yes, that is correct. We are not even halfway through the regular season and there's already been yes, 91 40 point outings that the NBA has produced so far. But why is this happening? Since the beginning of the league, there has been one thing that has been constant and that is change. And the significance and frequency of that change can be influenced by a myriad of different reasons. So LeBron First, changed the game. International play, an overwhelming amount of success, just to name a few, especially that success part. No one was looking for the next MJ until Michael Jordan dominated the entire 90s. And of course, there were some hit or misses along the way, but you know, you kind of get Who's that? Point. But what is so interesting to me is the amount of change, especially when it comes to scoring within a finite amount of time. Going back to the 40 point game graph, you can clearly see even within a 10 year period, there has been a noticeable increase. And just for the people out there who think that I may be overreacting to outlier performances, what about season averages? Back in the day when I was growing up and a young NBA fan, being a 20 point score was a covenant title. It was, yeah, it was. Yeah, Back in like 2012, 2013, being 20 points a game, that means you were all-star, basically. There's only 20 to 30 players on a year. You were automatically put in an all-star game. You average 20 points or more. Your bases were skilled enough to average 20 points by the end of the season. Now, this continued to be the norm all throughout the 2000s. However, in the Fact. early 2010s, there was a noticeable decrease in how many players could average 20 points on a year-to-year -year basis. And that's another video for another day. But since 2015, the number of players continued to increase over and over again. And instead of there only being 20 to 30 players averaging 20 points, it's increased to 30 to 40 different players. Until this year, where things really Dang. got out of hand. In the year 2023, there are 54 Curry's fault. He says LeBron's fault. How, how is it LeBron's 20, fault? 20 points are better in the NBA. This is insane. Look, if you're ambitious. Look, you're supposed to buy goldaccelerator.com. 40 point games have become mundane. Video game stat lines have become normal. And every single night, the level of scoring and overall production from individual you players. The you got the Thunder Hang 150 on yourself? Did you call yourself a championship team? team perspective feels like the something's about to get bounced out they're not winning the championship it's based so off this game alone they let the thunder hang 150 well, on them. starters we have to talk about pace one of the most overlooked variables when comparing different eras throughout nba history yet it is still the most impactful and consistent factor when it comes to measuring scoring from an individual or a team perspective and honestly i don't know why people don't bring this up more often when talking about all-time great players Every bit of information that we have at our hands throughout the 75 years that this league has exist has shown us that the trend of scoring, regardless if it goes up or down, is directly correlated in some way to the pace of the league at that time. And honestly, it makes sense. The higher the pace means that there's more possessions and with more possessions means that there's more opportunity to score. And looking at the pace back in 1999 to 2009 up into 2019, there is a noticeable difference. And since 2019, the pace has been relatively the same over the past five years. 
However, this can't be the only contributing factor. Matter of fact, it can't even be the biggest contributing no factor defense. to explain this scoring explosion that we're witnessing this year because there have been time periods throughout league history where the pace has been just as fast, if not faster, than what we're witnessing right now. Going back to the 1988 season where the pace is just as fast as it is in today's game, the amount of field goal attempts are relatively the same. And actually back then, the league average on free throw attempts was 29 times a game in contrast to where we are today where it's sub 24 attempts and people say oh i and i and oh it's on our that's a play on that's a play on that's a play on our no blood no fab per game i shot more free throws back in 88 and yet still at that time the league average in terms of points per game from a team perspective was 108 in contrast to where is, we are right now where it's nearly 114 so there has to be something else going on right well, you would be correct because another major variable to the scoring outbursts are analytics. I know, I know, I know, depending on who you are, that is a big no-no word when having real hoop basketball conversations, but I do believe it's very important for me to bring this up because regardless of how you feel about analytics, the proof is in the pudding. If we can go back through the pudding? history and find years where the pace and shot attempts are relatively similar to where we are today, but the amount of points that are being scored is drastically different, then that would literally prove that analytics is producing a more efficient way of basketball. The long two pointers have been replaced with more efficient and hate those journeys for the Rockets. And the level of volume that we're seeing this year is historic. Nearly 39% of the shots that have been attempted so far this year are three pointers, a noticeable increase from where we just were 10 years ago. And that difference becomes even more comical the further back you go in NBA history. Back in the 88 season, roughly five to six percent of the shot attempts were three pointers, then replacing the pull up mid range jumpers or even post up plays with an influx of of relentless attacks to the basket has not only removed a lot of the shots within the mid-range area but also it has increased the two-point percentage in the league to a historic high of 54 percent and beyond just threes and twos the free throw percentage is the highest has been throughout nba history which translates to the highest true shooting percentage the league has ever seen as well and also huh? over the past four to five years the turnover rate has been the lowest it's ever been so yeah, even if you are one of the more pure-breaded real hoopers out there, or just an old head that gets caught up in nostalgia, the results are pretty <laughs> undeniable. Another major factor to the scoring boom are rule changes. I know for some of my younger fans out there, you may be in denial about this or just unaware because you weren't watching basketball 20 to 30 years ago. However, it is undeniably true that the league has either changed or adjusted rules to best benefit offense. They in did. In particular, majority they can't hand check anymore. of these rule adjustments have been more perimeter leaning. And this is very important. And um, they prep the offensive player. You can't land in the landing area. Important to highlight because when having this discussion, they did that rule for the um Kawhi. What happened to Kawhi and Zaza Pachulia? As many people are going to compare different eras throughout NBA history, and with rule changes having a heavy influence on how the game is played, it does not immediately mean that just because player A plays in an era where he's more scoring means that he could go in another era and dominate just as well. There are certain rules that just don't exist anymore that yep. have lifted. It changed the rules because they just want the because some of them they had to, and some of them because of the players of certain players like the james harden rule we can't do our natural basketball moves to get foul and they won't call especially it especially the ones that play on the perimeter that they did last season they made some new rules last season to stop james harden <laughs> however even with all of those reasonable and legitimate variables and factors that i just highlighted i do believe there is one clear explanation behind this new wave of scoring explosion that has taken over the nba especially over the past two to three years and that is innovation so he's supposed to buy twocart.net. A wise man once said, innovation is the unrelentless drive to break the status quo and develop anew where few have dared to go. And when it comes to the NBA, progressive mind states have really taken over yep. the league, the imagery, and Curry, the Harden, of basketball. And LeBron, according played. to Lowe. And in terms of the status quo that has been teared down, well, throughout NBA history, especially throughout the 80s, 90s, and 2000s, there was this belief that individual that players tough. had roles and responsibilities based on the position in which they played in. And because of this, identity mm, such J. as traditional point guards or a true big man who started to develop themselves in the NBA culture. But now as time continues to progress, what we're witnessing are some of those roles and responsibilities bleed over from one position to the next, which has led to more well-rounded offensive players in the NBA. 
and all of that has resulted into a slew of volume scores who have the capability of also managing an offense with their playmaking and ball handling abilities. Now, to be fair, this playing style has always existed in the NBA, <laughs> but what ended up occurring them twice. when these players started to exercise their full capability offensively is that they were normally chastised and identified as selfish players or ball hogs, and the whole idea of having a volume score, being able to handle and manage the offense, was viewed through a lens in which was not winning style of basketball. But now in today's game, the mentality has shifted and changed, and I think a lot of that has to do with the innovation that LeBron brought to the table. Early in Braun's career, not only did he display a feel for the game that made him an exquisite passer, but also complemented that skill set with a level of volume scoring that made him practically impossible to defend. But he's and not a scorer. Many of his That's what he said. He's not a scorer. Even though he's like number two all the time, he said he's not a scorer. The level of success he's a passer. That he's seen throughout his career, in particular between 2007 and 2016, was so astonishing that it had to be duplicated in the upcoming era. And so now this philosophy is so openly accepted that we even give it a name. We talked about this in my last video, the heliocentric star. I make that fast all the time. That's what I'm saying, kids. Hey, Look, about this you don't need to meet no flash play. You just make a pass fake to catch the defense off guard. They both ran at him. Two people both ran at him just off a of ball fake. So the heliocentric star where you have one individual who has a significant amount of influence on his team's offense. Like now, what does all of this have to do with what we're talking about? Well, in today's game, because this ideology is much more openly accepted, what's starting to happen is that you have these players who've practically always existed in NBA history, the ones who can go for a 20, 30, or even 40 on any given night, now have the ability to initiate the offense. So instead of the game slowing down, teams running sets that put their best offensive player in positions to score the basketball, that player is bringing the ball up and is immediately a threat to score as soon as he crosses the half court line. And the numbers back this up as well. The amount of players who have a usage rating of 30 or higher is at an all time high. Also with volume scoring players having the ball in their hands more predominantly, players having the ability to average 20 or 25 points while still contributing five or more assists. While taking 20 to 25 shots a game, yep. It's at an all time high as well. Out of those 54 players who are averaging 20 or better, 26 of them are averaging five assists or more. How astonishing is that? Well, between 1985 to 1995, there were only 24 players who had the ability to average 20 points and five assists within at least one season. So yeah, within an entire decade between the 80s and 90s, there are fewer players. Shaq kind of average five assists a game. 20 and five player than there are in today's league. Now, of course, people want to bring up other aspects, and I do believe there's some validity to some of the concerns that you may bring up in the comment section below, such as the league being- I blame Curry, oriented. not LeBron. That is true, and that certainly contributes to what I'm talking about. However, when you look at big men as well, their ability to handle and initiate offenses has increased also. Giannis, Jokic, Zion, DeMontis Sabonis, just to name a few. But then you even have players such as Joel Embiid, Carl Lee Towns, and Pascal Siakam this Shooting year, threes. all having career highs and assist totals. I know many people like imagine how many times about him shooting threes like the analytics aspect of it and that is true getting three that's probably about like that's probably like 12 points away he even probably makes like four four threes a game he probably takes probably like 10 helps however there are certain players in today's game who don't shoot that many threes such as Kawhi Leonard and Kevin Durant who still are having some of the greatest scoring seasons of their they shoot mid range career. and as I say that I also do not believe that it's a coincidence that we're starting to see an increased role in ball handling responsibilities with KD and Kawhi FYI their assist numbers are also going up as well and even to a more extreme example we have someone like DeMar DeRozan who doesn't shoot threes and when he does he doesn't make them at any respectable clip and yet still he has the ability to have some of the greatest scoring seasons of his career over the past three to four years and once again it's not coincidental that his responsibility as a ball handler and playmaker has increased alongside with his assist totals yeah greg Popovich made him better and oh yeah be very mindful that those three examples that i just gave you they've been in the nba for several years now so we can look at what they once were back in their earlier years compare them to where they are right now and it is undeniable what the influence of someone like LeBron has had on this league, the level, the standard, and expectations that come along with being a volume scorer is at an all-time high, which has produced much more well-rounded offensive pieces. And instead of having someone set them up, volume scorers now have a direct impact on the game, which gives them more opportunities to score. And I do believe that is a major contributing factor to yielding these type of results.
But hey, that's just a theory of mine. I do believe all those other factors play a massive role as well, but I don't want people to overlook the innovation that I believe has brought us to this point as well in NBA history. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. We're almost at 300K on this channel. I thank you very much for all your support. Also, if you want more day-to-day -day content from me about basketball, go to my second channel. I'm starting to upload there much more frequently, largely because we're in the middle of the season and I have a lot to say about what's going on in the league right now. And as always, thank you for the support. Hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. And until next time, I'll see you all later. Peace. I'll blame Curry.